All right. Welcome to the Dirty Casual Corner, episode 9. The date is uh, March 3rd, 2018. Uh, I am your host, uh, Edwin Vega. And, and, and I'm David. Yeah. This is my co-host uh, and special guest, David. And, uh, well, we'll just start rolling in the punches. David, can you tell me what have you been watching? I've been watching mostly Overlord. It's like a dinner time with the Emia family. Ruby, some uh, recapping of uh, Maid Dragon, as well as Konosuba. Alright, can you... Since I've been watching uh, Overlord, I've only gotten to episode 5. I'm assuming you're caught up and everything? Of course. Alright, uh, sport is to me never matter, so tell me what's been the development. Well, we're now entering the, king of the Human Kingdom. And it's safe to say that it's, it's filled with history. And that's being polite. Being rude, it's very stuck in traditions, and hardly anything gets done. Yes. Sounds like the 41st millennium. Well, yeah, it sounds more or less accurate. We're also seeing some new characters in, as well as, like, the Golden Princess. As well as, like, a... The one from the ending that you told me? Yes, I... precisely. And how she's trying to reform the kingdom into a better place. As well as seeing some other adventurers who are also an adamantian class. And we're seeing some familiar faces. Which is high, high class, right? Yes. Okay. We're also seeing some old uh, familiar faces like Gazav. Or... Gaz, Gaz who? You remember that uh, soldier guy from episode 2 or so? Oh, oh. Uh, the guy who's like super overpowered for his human race class? Yes. Like oh. one of the best swordsmen in the hu of all humans. And got saved by Momong. Yes. Momonga. Alright. Uh, yeah, he's been showing up every now and then. Yes, but we're seeing him back again because this is where he works. Hmm. Okay. I mean, just so I can just to say it out there, the last episode I saw was literally lizard fucking and then everyone getting stumped. That sounds more or less accurate. Yes. Yeah. Uh, although well, I, it was admirable because I think they made the fight scene really good for an what's it called a uh, one-sided fight. Yeah, for a one-sided fight, they really did have some depth to it, like. You can tell Kakaidas really liked the, these guys, and he gave them, like, he didn't give them everything, but he... He paid them respect. He, definitely. He did, he did not look down on them. At least for the last two, but everyone else, he did his Frost Aura, and they got fucked, and then the, the remainder he had to cut down. Well, more like, he rose two ice pillars, said that anyone who passes them will be killed. But he's also saying that if you don't pass them, I won't kill you. Yeah. He also contained himself from releasing his frost ore from hitting everybody. Yeah, so he kept it in a small... So he kept it before the pillars, right? And yes. And didn't go further out. And it's like, he, he could have used his frost ore to take out everybody. He is a level 100 fighter. Yeah, he's still... Per he's fucking beast, and He was designed to be the perfect, like, a warrior or soldier. Isn't he the first level boss? No, that's the... Shaltier. Shaltier is though is the boss for like mostly the first three levels, mm. and she was like min max. Well, she's pretty tough, and then I thought that, she was min max. Like I said, her uh, her owner or the creator Paraparuchi like designed her to be perfectly like a a raid boss. Yeah, and it's like he equipped her with high class items. Everyone, I mean, I know, I know all the bosses have fucking high-end items, that's why, you know, the guy wasn't worried about archers or like, oh yeah, I can negate... Projectiles. Melee, ne I can negate projectiles and I can also negate, like, uh, magic weapons if they're l weaker than I am, so yeah. Like, yeah. Well, not only that, he's like, attacks that are like below, like, say, level 60, they could be nullified. Yeah. But, well, he de but he de deactivated it. Yeah. But there were some things he can't naturally deactivate. Mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, uh, Kokaitis only used one arm. Yeah, one arm. He did not move from his spot the entire time. And he has four arms, just, just to give the uh, our viewership some context there. So, yeah, it would have been a slaughter if he had them. It wouldn't even be a slaughter, I guess. It'd just be like, what's the point? Why live? Just suicide right, right there and then. Pretty much, it's like an ant trying to face a juggernaut. It, it depends on where he's standing, but yeah, no. Usually an ant can survive that. Um, so, what's the next one you just said? Uh, you're watching Dragon Maid? 
Yeah, I've been re-watching uh, Dragon Maid as well. As well as reading some of the latest manga chapters. Yeah, um... I haven't been re-watching Dragon Maid, but I, I did really like uh, the show, especially since the beginning episode was like... Yeah, I thought it was really unique. I was really bi biased on it. And then, like, once they got to the Dark Souls reference in, like, episode 2 or 3, I was just like, alright, I'm a little warmed up to it. And then I found out who the creator was, and I was on board. Uh, which is the guy who made, uh... I Can't Understand My Husband. Yep. Yeah, it's a really good show. Um, but, uh... Man, I don't remember really much. Uh, there's too much to like about it. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice series with inter an interesting twist on the whole mate concept. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's not really that much of a maid. More like she's just there and she just tries fixing things. But that's kind of her appeal, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So. What what else have you been watching? Like, well, I've been rewatching some Ruby show episodes, you know. Ruby. Right? Yeah, you know the Ruby as well as Ruby Chibi. It's like a, it's a nice old way to pass the time. Mm -hmm. See some good fight scenes or get some smiles and giggles. Uh, like, uh, I actually kind of I know there's a Chibi series about it, and I, it kind of really didn't interest me. But what surprised me was uh, it's all voiced. You know, it's not like. Oh man, I gotta remember the different one, but uh, there's some chibi shows where they don't, they don't have voices, they just do kind of grunts and stuff like that, where it's just kind of like silent acting. Just, no, that's just strange. Yeah, I mean, so, especially since, since it's an English dub, it's interesting, but I, I haven't really given it a watch. But uh, the last one I did see was, uh, at least on my feed for YouTube, was the uh, Yang Learns to Drive. No, I don't think that ever happened. She uh, she already had her license. A car. She had oh. a motorcycle license. But... Yeah. Oh, you mean when they go on a road trip? Yeah, I think that was it. And I was just like, huh. Um, I, n I didn't watch it. Uh, at least all the way. I just watched a bit. L literally learned that it was dubbed. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Backed out because I had to go back to work. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's pretty cute, but uh, the meat and potatoes of the show is definitely Ruby, the original series. And what can you tell me about that? Because I think it's over. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been over for a while. So not much to tell you other than that they have to go back to, you know, Atlas. Atlas. Where's what? Atlas? Where he, uh, Weiss Weiss lives. Oh, no. Or at least, or last thing that happened is now that kingdom's now, you know, closed off. Atlas? Yes. General Ironwood, like the leader of the military, more or less to closing off the entire, uh, like, continent. Why is that? I mean... He's a more... After the events of uh, Beacon, he more or less realized of how much of a threat he is, and he's been, like, taking a little, some more action on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on doing something. Mm -hmm. And the attitudes of people back there, well, have been very less than inspiring for him. Oh, uh, yeah, I bet. I mean, like, frankly, he went to a charity ball to raise funds to help help out Beacon and all, and everyone was just, like, you know, looking down on them. Despite the fact that people died, a kingdom fell down, and because of that, grim activity's been on the rise. Yeah, I mean... He's like, and people are saying, eh, whatever, they are, they deserved it. I remember that uh, that season, at least, uh, yeah. Yang uh, Weiss's uh, departure was a really good uh, build-up from all that, so just shows the uh, mentality of what, like, what was it called, Atlas? Just yeah. shows how, like, rich and snobby they are. Yes, and that's like, quite frankly, it just, it kind of, in a sense, it disgusted him, so, you know. But what was his, okay, what was his justification? Keeping exactly? people safe. So there was no actual happening. He's just like, I'm going to close off Atlas. Yes, to keep people safe. It's more like Did everything. People... It's it's more or less military lockdown. Okay, so and he, he has is... jurisdiction? 
I told you, he's the general of the army. Yeah, but who's army? Atlas, the leading, uh, the world's leading army. Mm, okay. Like, seriously, they have like a giant robot army. As well as like a mo the most militarized, uh, oh, uh, like all uh, groups. Not only that, they convert their huntsman academies to be connected to the military. I mean, which explains why uh, why sister is there. Uh, Winter. Winter. Thank and you. it's also why Crow doesn't like him. He's more or less indoctrinating a huntsman into his army. It's smart, but at the same time, it's propaganda based. It defeats the purpose of a huntsman, in a sense. Yeah. They don't have a choice. All right. Well, shit. Like. Well, that's happened in Ruby, and I did leave it off at some point, so... Yeah. I still have to continue it and all that, but, uh... You know, for now, I'm kind of satisfied with, like, what I know right now. Yeah, let's see what else. I've been also watching Dinner Time with the Emmy, apparently. It's a nice... It's a nice show. Ooh, uh, on that note, did you actually get to episode three? Yes. What do you think of Ilya? It's good to see her. It's also nice to see her like that. You you mean dressed up or totally like toned down in the whole pathological killer sense? Both. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I know it's so different. Yeah, she's always, she's always been adorable when she wasn't trying to be the psychotic, uh, like you know, creepy child vibe eh, that she gave out. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I think if I remember correctly, there was a Fate Stay Night route, a uh, bad end where like Emiya tried to confront like Ilya, and then he like gets turned into a basically paralyzed doll or something. No, yeah, there's several routes. Yes, more or less she cuts off his head, but keeps it alive and, you know. I thought she didn't cut off his head. I thought it was like... She... There were one or two routes where that happens. Ah, oh, I need to do that then. Um, Other times she just had a berserker kill him or eat him. Dang. I, I What I remember was he just was paralyzed and like... like a vegetable kind of thing like he couldn't right. move or anything he had no will of his own because yeah. Ilya looked him in the eyes and all that and I'm just thinking wait is she gonna assault him or something or more like torture him but you know it's nice to see her all calm down and like dressed up new look plus the food is amazing um yeah it's not like uh Shoki uh, Shokugeki yeah it's yeah. not like that at all but I mean, it's it's a good series and all that, but sometimes it got way too over the top with how with the, the food gasms or the yeah, food? the food gasms. Okay, yeah. See that the my biggest turn off for, for that show was uh, you can't watch uh, Food Wars or Shokugeki no Soma in public, and if you do, you have to like have a little small corner, and make sure no one's around, and all that. Or just don't care about what people think. Of oh, that, there's that, but I mean, like that's just kind of the thing. Like you just can't watch it and just be like yeah this is happening you know they're totally like having the big o right now and the food looks amazing don't get me wrong it probably is more amazing than it is like you know than what they show you but i mean it's just a food gasms it's just like a way to get people in and whereas uh emia i feel like i, I really like the whole recipe thing going on with it like um, at least for the third episode, yeah, uh, they did the whole uh, Ilya showing up, and then um, yeah, you know they're just showing around the house, the Emiya house, and then the whole food is already prepped. And they yeah. go back like what an hour or two before then, and they show you the process of the whole cooking. Yeah, to the point that you might actually be be able to do it yourself. I mean. You might need a little bit more in-depth thing, but holy shit, like, they give you enough. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I, I really liked what Rin did with the freaking, uh, eggs she got. She had, like, a, I don't remember what it was, like, crepe-like omelet that she kind of made them dressed up like freaking, uh, robes, Japanese robes, mm -hmm. and, like, the egg was the head. Mm -hmm. on a pile of rice. It was really nice. It was aesthetically pleasing. There's sakura sushi flowers. Uh, a lot of the food was like really aesthetically pleasing and like it, it makes Shukuyaki no Soma take notes in my opinion. Um, 
but I think the main, my main, uh, what I really liked about it was, uh, shoot, what were they? Oh, yeah, the uh, Sakura and Rin interaction, which we have staring at us right now. Yeah. Um, I mean Rin, but I mean, I, they don't seem to hate each other, at least, like, uh, their relationship isn't as awkward, but it's still kind of there. Well, you know what happened. Oh, yeah, I know what happened. Um, hey, you know, we still have to look forward to Shinji's fucking episode, and by that, just hate his, just hate his fucking guts. Yeah, that was all right. Yeah, uh, what else have you been watching? Hmm, that's... No, they have Kona Suba, you know, so I rewatch that sometimes just for laughs. My I've, it, and been the, looking forward to the new third season, as I said a few times, that's supposed to be coming out within the next few months. It's this year? Yeah. Nice. I mean, uh, I felt the second season was kind of dull up until the end. The surprise boss fight was what made it worse. But my favorite episode is always going to be the Succubus episode. There's a Succubus Club? Yes. Well, it explains why so many people stay in that uh, stay in that town, despite being you know higher level than most people. Oh yeah, and I mean, dude, you have the fucking bro dude who just shows up like in every episode. He's like, oh bro, oh kid, yo kid man, you you're gonna do be an adventure. That's good, man. And you just think like, he's some tough adventure, and he's actually like what a farmer? Nope, he's a weaver. Oh, great. A basket weaver? That seems to be the case. Oh, my fucking god. He's like a giant, macho, tough-looking guy with the afro. No, no, no. No, no, no afro. Mohawk. Uh, mohawk. Mohawk. My bad. He's like, it's just... You uh, you imagine him like to be some sort of berserker or axe wielder or, you know, like, warrior. A he, monk. Or, yeah. He's a weaver. He's like, all this time. Yeah, but I mean... Ah, like, do weavers become that mu muscular? If so, we might want to consider a career change. Dude, I mean, maybe there's some background he's not giving, but maybe he's a weaver now, but he was probably a bandit back in the day. There's but, a lot of theories. Some people say that he's probably even, like, one of the demon gen lord generals. Fuck. Okay, that'd be a really great surprise right there, because, I mean, uh, what I did like about the uh, slime boss in Season 2 was... Uh, he didn't know he was the slime boss. He just know he, he just saw him as the guy that hated the fucking town he was in. Could you blame him? The whole town was pretty much a cult. It was a cult among cults, like trying to get people in. Join the uh, what was the fucking uh okay? Join the fucking Axis Axis Church. Join the fucking Axis Church and praise our loving goddess and waifu uh, Aqua, and she'll give you good luck. Just sign this fucking contract. Nah, nothing. Uh, and like... Like, all the attempts of, like, trying to get people to, like, join them were, like... It rained so many things, and it was so absurd, so crazy. Everyone in that town was trying to recruit them. Oh, yeah. From like, the elderly to the young to, like, uh... To the men, to the women, to the little kids. It, it, so it's basically, like, showing up at, like, a car dealership and having, like... The surprise freaking, like, dealers show up like, Oh, hey, you like that car? We can tell you everything about it. Nah, I'm, I'm just browsing around. And then some other guy, when he turned the next corner, is there. And does the same thing on you. But then here's the twist. Then you leave the car dealer. You go to a restaurant. Turns out everyone in the restaurant works in the car dealer. The, oh, yeah, I couldn't help but see you that you were there, man. You know, I can give you a good deal on this car. Like, it's in 2000. 17 Nissan Ultima, but I had to fucking pull that out of my ass right there. But man, it's like they're trying to con you into the fucking Axis Church, and it's fucking hilarious. Oh yeah. And there's a lot I like about Kunasuba. Uh, it's it's certainly unique because uh, you have fucking rock monsters and slimes. Apparently, slimes are fucking killer in this game. Well, when you think about it, it's kind of, it kind of makes sense from what they describe slimes. You know, they don't have a physical body, and they're just like slime, so physical attacks don't do much to them. And some of them have magic resistance. And they're, and then most of them, or at least the, you know, Hans, who was the, you know, the demon lord, the slime, is apparently acid. Ah, uh, yeah. 
Very quick acid. Oh, by the way. Actually, what I, uh, on, on that note, I really like the confidence that... Uh, Kazumu had that, because he thought a slime was like the same ones in Dragon Quest. Yeah, and then it turned... It just, just seeing him, like, have yeah. his hopes crushed, his confidence totally just thrown out the window, it's just beautiful. And, yep. And they, they, they deserve the win. I, I give, I'll give them that. Oh, yeah. But, Given how or unorthodox they fought. Yeah, totally unorthodox. Well, uh, well that's one of the ch charming points about them. The fights, they're not like they're your standard fights. You really don't know how they're going to fight or win. Mm, all right. Uh, well, what else have you been watching, David? Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, besides, I've been like looking at some you know, crunchy roll and seeing a, a resurgence of old anime, so I've been watching one or two things from here or there, but... Nothing really stands out at this moment. Oh, we'll, we'll uh, rant about that. Oh, yeah, I know. Main topic. That's our main topic, so... Yeah, but there was nothing really that stand, uh, stands out at this moment. Nah. Like, I, I feel like our main topic's gonna be a rant, because... Yeah, that sounds about right! Yeah, fuck it, you know. It's just gonna be in there, so... I guess for me, it's gonna be... Darling in the Franks, uh... I cannot believe you actually watched that. I think I'm on episode 6 or 7. Well, whatever episode that the beach episode happened. It's not, well, yeah, probably 7, I think. But it's it's not done yet. No, it's not. Um, Still ongoing. I ended up watching it because I have to watch it because Sean's not here. And, I mean, I did, I did watch a few episodes beforehand. And um, I thought it was okay. You know, I thought it was a really average, uh, like... Trigger anime, it's definitely not like uh, Kill a Kill or Grand Logan. No, because the fact that they were, they were made from the same studio, like when you first hear about it, you have some expectations that it's going to be good and all. Or, yeah. like, or like on the same level as them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, well, from what I know, it's also it's a collaboration work be between Trigger and some other studios. So yeah. Trigger's doing the main robot design, then the character design. Then yeah. Someone else doing is, is doing backgrounds. Yeah. Um, it's just weird. Like the the way you pilot the robots really is lewd. Oh and, yeah, and these uh, are like child soldiers that have no idea about anything you know sexual. And they're gonna they're so pure, like they don't even know what kissing is. Yeah. And i just all right so just to finish it off i guess i I've, i watched up to the beach episode at least five minutes in and then i just turned it off i i think it's boring maybe if i get someone else to tell uh, who's watched ahead of me try to sell it to me i'll probably consider that but i, I think on my part i think i've dropped it officially uh and this one's gonna be fun for you david my next anime no oh, goody dust march I cannot believe you watched that abomination or that uh, or that travesty. Yeah, it's so. I told it's you. Bad. I I've been saying this for like this a few times in podcast about how bad it is, but I guess I'm from. I'm gonna have to get into some, some get into detail. Oh, we'll get into detail, all right. But uh, I've only watched two episodes. I thought it was uh, three. Two or three, three probably. Um, I watched. I watched it yesterday with. Uh, DJ and um, I, I was not looking forward to it, but I also couldn't say no exactly. I was just like, we we needed a break from Overwatch. We got our asses handed back to us. Like, was oh man, it was pretty and bad. Apparently, the best way to you know like heal your wounds or cuts was by pouring salt or lemon on them. Well, it was supposed to be something sweet. We're like, oh yeah, we'll just watch anime. Yeah, we'll give a few episodes before we go back. You know, have you seen Death March? Shit, and uh, I knew it was bad. I, 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 I knew several him people that. told me it was bad. Me especially. And you know, I was just the, I was just in it for the ride, I guess. And boy, did I get fucking mad because like the beginning first episode was was pretty good. Like you know, you get to know the character. It was kind of a little dull, but like. That's how it is. That was like, probably the best thing of the show. It was like one of those standard episodes, or like in the beginning, where a guy's living an ordinary life. You know, things are go this and that. There's not much for him. Then, poof! Somehow he ends up in a different world. Yeah, like I think what was it? Um, 
he ended up doing an all nighter decoding bugs and shit, and he sleeps yeah. in his office. Yes. So the old guy, by the way, uh, sleeps in his office and he wakes up in the fucking Matrix where uh, he's a fucking fifteen year old. Like, I don't like that premise at all. Like, that's just like, yo, like, it, bro. I'd probably like it more if he was a little old. If he was older, twenty, I'll take twenty. Like, maybe twenty five. Uh, 30 definitely but like it just be a little bit bonus points yep. for a bad anime so it's not redeeming at all and and long story short he goes ahead and he's being attacked like there's a giant you know lizard army that comes at him or a dragon army without wings and then more or less he activates notices he has an icon and he activates it and like presses three times mm -hmm. and more or less that uh, that little icon was to do a spell which was basically meteor storm and he basically committed genocide well he I, fucking powered leveled so that's no he got by doing that all the lizard people died and he more or less you know as you said power leveled yeah from like level one to 310 14 314 Yes. Oh god. He's... So, so basically, yeah, he's now pretty much, you know, unstoppable. Yeah. And I hate the guy so much. Like the guy is pretty much a Gary Stew among Gary Stews. I could like him more if, like, if he had some sort of personal quirks or you know, like flaws. Yeah. No. no. Well, no, yeah, that doesn't exist. Doesn't. None of that exists with this guy. I mean, well, for an MMO, what confuses me is why would you have, like, persuasion skills? Like, I mean, you know, persuasion and, we, like, trickery for, and all this stuff. Like, for an MMORPG, that doesn't work, so it's totally confusing. But... First off, we're not sure if it's really an MMO that he fell into. All we know is that he's not in his world. We're not... For, it's, so there's no proof that he even fell into, the, like, the game that he was debugging. Yeah, I mean... There's no proof. So basically, we can't even go with that premise. Okay, All, I get you. But like you said, it, basically any skill that he thinks about or wants or needs, he can... It pops up, puts in like it's from 1 to be like being a new to 10 being God. Well, I, or like skill-wise. Was it 10? I thought it maxed up to 5 or 6. I thought it was 10. You know, 5 is like intermediate. And I mean like... I thought it was like one, two, three, four, five, and okay. six is max. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Point is, he's got so much fucking points to spec in that, like, it, when the time comes and he's gonna need said situation maxed out, he can do it on the fly, and it pisses me off. Yeah. Like, he fucking get convinces himself to like, oh, I'm a traitor and I lost my papers. Okay. And he maxes him out his persuasion. Yeah, Tr persuasion and trickery, and they're like. Okay, yeah, sure. We'll 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 give you some. Just come with us, and he totally gets this thing. Also, he's hiding his power level because yeah. I guess he broke the game, and you know, yeah. it still counts him as level one, even though he's like over three hundred. No, that's just another benefit of him, man, with his uh, trickery bullshit. Is he? Huh. Actually, if that's the case, then yeah. I don't know, it's- I don't think you could lie to the fucking pedal stone or whatever it was. Actually, you can. It's well, just that it's uh, not- it's not easy to do. But remember, like like I said, trickery bullshit. Yeah, he- he did it, and... Well, one thing, um... No, I it, believe in this- You wanna know how- how much bullshit this trickery is? His trickery bullshit goes to? He's standing in front of a- Later on, eventually, there'll be, like, some sort of, a, like, living lie detector. He lies to it. Okay, uh, I'll have to check that out. Maybe, probably not. Yeah, I don't mean, worry. You'll know when it's there. There's only one redeeming thing about it, but let me get into what led up to that redeeming thing. So he goes to an inn, and in I think the second episode, and like there's this nice busty young gal takes him in, and I'm just like, oh yeah, she looks pretty cute, you know. It's probably his age. No, she's fucking 13. And I'm just like, well, I wonder what they put in the water. Uh, yeah, it's either that or genetics. Something about that world, since, you know, it's all magic-based and everything, like, either, like, causes people to be up here differently. Uh, on the subject of genetics, I have a thing for her mom. Okay. You know, I have a thing for nice, thick women, and, you know, she kind of meets the bear... 
the the dang good standard of just meat and not too fat. Like I like a working gal, you know, and I bet her quiche is really delicious when it's warm. Wait, whoops, I just fuck it. Anyway, I'm going with that. I mean I I like a girl who can cook, I like a gal who works, like yeah. And plus she's she's the uh, plus size. Like it's just one of my new fetishes now. Sometimes some artists do that really well, and she appealed to me. And I'm just like, well, I found one good thing in this fucking show. I need this. Well, unfortunately, it. we have to go back to all the un the not so good things. Ah, uh, I fucking hate the girl he saved. Which the, one? The blonde girl that's like a soon. The princess looking one. No, no. Okay, the blonde one's not a soon right. She's a uh, pretty. She's pretty uh, up for it, straight. She doesn't. You know, she's not violent. No, no, no. Sundries aren't usually violent, but like, she's sorry, like, but it's like the whole thing. Like my concept of sundries are now being a has now been forever tainted with the whole like um taiga. Yeah, and also zero no casa. Zero no. The pink haired girl, little midget. Kaza, not Kaza no The familiar of zero. Uh, well, yeah, oddly enough, I think Taiga and, uh... They were both made from the same person. Eloise? Yeah, they're voiced by the same person. Yeah. Um, well, hey, I mean, in my opinion, I have different standards for Cinder. It's just a girl who can't fucking tell her feelings directly, but still wants, but still shows it. She's just I would say more. I would say she's more shy than Cinder. Yeah, and she's like, I don't know, I just don't like her. And the guy's aware of it, but he doesn't say anything. Well, because he's fucking 30 years old. He's got the fucking thing. He's like, yeah, if I was younger, I'd probably buy into this. But no, I need someone fresher. And yeah. No, um, well, he's more or less... Okay, long story short, more or less the little girl just pretty much latched onto him. Alright. Now, and unfortunately, that little girl is... Well... I don't know if you know about this, so it might be a spoiler. For, I don't care. It's fucking Death March. I'm not gonna watch it. Yeah, she's like him. Scum? No! A person then who was uh, brought back to this world. Except she's level 13? Yeah. Oh, you're kidding me. Alright. So basically she's from uh, she's from Earth, but she's been, been you know, reincarnating into that world. Okay, now that's gonna throw a wrench in that but I'm not gonna continue to watch yeah it. next one is laid back camp um well it's a lot more laid back than from what a mess that we were talking about uh it's yeah it's you know I had to watch that today again just because I needed something to get the saw away from fucking death march I couldn't get drunk enough yesterday to fucking forget it yeah because if you did we wouldn't be having this podcast yeah so um Hold on. On that subject, let me open up another one. I'll take it easy on this one. So, ah, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the selection today. Unfortunately, we've uh, disowned Bud Light Platinum today. You know, so sorry, Bud Light. We we, we won't get your sponsorship. But I have stopped a uh, draft on me. Uh, so that's a good brand. But uh, that's not important. Uh, let's go back to the fucking main topic, which was I couldn't forget the salt, so I needed to uh, get laid back. Laid Back Camp is a really good uh, anime about, I'd say, middle middle school or high school girls. Yeah, we'll we'll probably say even say junior. Mm, I'll say middle school. Yeah, I, middle. Let's just say girls. It's about these these girls who fucking get into outdooring and. They, it's kind of punny. Like a lot of the jokes build on each other. Um, a lot of the characters are dopey. Um, there's a fucking lolly ass girl who's like, she, uh, I I like her as a character, but I could you know if you lived in that world you'd see her as annoying as fuck. But like, I like that trope about her. And like, she's kind of headstrong and all that stuff. But uh, there's there's a lot more depth to that character. Like. Ah, man, she's just a dork. She, and... Ah, uh, I mean, those are other characters. I think my favorite one is probably the blonde girl who, like, works at the supermarket. She's kind of responsible compared to her. Like, 
exam in the episode I saw exams are coming up and they're like, oh yeah, winter exams are coming up and it's winter break. Um, I should go home and study. And sh and she goes to see her friend and she's like, oh, I can't get fired up until like the day before and I'm just like, yeah, your future is so bright, girl. And yeah, it's, it's just funny. Um. Laid Back Camp is definitely one of those camping animes that if you don't get the confidence to go camping and doing outdoor stuff, um, it might not be the anime for you, but, you know, there's something that feels really realistic about the anime that I really enjoy. Um, so, have you watched any of it, David? Just a little. Not as much as you. I'm, I'm on episode nine, I believe. Yeah, episode nine. Um, you it gives you a lot to learn in that anime, like different styles of tents, different styles of like, uh, cooking wear, propane, like, uh, there's there's a something to learn in almost each episode, and that if that's not what you're there for. It's definitely for the jokes and the girls, and I I've been, I've been enjoying that really well. Um, it's one of those nice animes that gets you feeling good. But, uh, my next one, it's A Place for Isn't in the Universe. Another feel-good anime with just a little bit more drama in it, like, uh, do you, have you seen that? I'm sorry, what? A Place for Isn't in the Universe, it's the oh. Antarctica anime. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we talked about this before. Yeah. It, this is my top pick, hands down, my top pick for, like, the anime you should be watching, because you got the girl, Yui from k uh doing one of the roles uh she I, I can look it up right now um but i'll probably do that later the main role would probably be my favorite character who's uh played by hana kanazawa i didn't know it was uh i didn't know about her until sean uh and ended up telling me about this and showed me her uh i mean the the role she's been in over 300, man. Like, over 300 fucking roles. Like, most of them I know, given my track record with anime. And probably yours, David. Yeah. Um, she's been in a lot. I feel like this is the role that she, she's she been pushing herself so far. And she makes she makes the anime real good. Because she, she plays a character who's, like, the most eager to go to Antarctica. Her mom, like... Um, went to Antarctica and then was left behind, something tragic happened, and uh, rather than just be satisfied or sad forever about like her mom's passing, she wants to take the step to see Antarctica and like maybe find her mom or at least be in the same place her mom was and like, you know, I could get behind that. Like uh, the first few episodes of the anime was just like, uh, her desire, her her singular desire to go to Antarctica, and like they progressed really well to get to the point where they're going to Antarctica officially. They get a they you know they join the uh, expedition team, and right now like it, she does a strong role because she knows how to she knows how to be that high energy not, not a high energy character she knows how to be the mio character in kaon if you remember yep uh mio's the responsible girl who uh gets really shy and all that but she takes it a little step further where like she has to do these like uh live stream videos blog things every now and then and she's just Stiff as a board, her voice cracking, and it's like, ah, this this is this water thing treatment. Yeah, I've seen this shit, and I'm just like, oh my fucking god, girl, you're so pure. You just, no, you just can't interact. And I, I really dig that about her character. Like, it, it just feels like Hana Kanazawa is actually, like, stretching a role, because one moment she'd be... Like, oh, we have to do this because, like, you know, I want to get through Antarctica. We got to get stronger. We got to build up our stamina. The next moment, I, she just fucks up. She fumbles and, like, she's just that character that's got multiple person, most multiple characteristics in her personality. And I like that. Um, 
uh, this the last two episodes I saw that made me caught up were uh, just basically interactions with the ship, a little bit of training, and she did get this whole kind of bit where she ends up talking to the expedition leader who knew her mom, and there was a bit of tension and drama in there, like, it, it gave her character a really good stand, and I think, uh, this is kind of my main reason why I think Hana Kanazawa and that character is, like, just what sells this show, like, you, among other people like she's probably the the main reason i stayed and i've been ba basically reaping every bit of it like i i recommend this show and hands down this is probably hana kanazawa's best role i've ever seen like this is my opinion i could be wrong i don't care I i'm saying it right now i think this is probably the best thing she's ever done because she has to stretch that role really well um i'll try to wrap up the next ones because they're not too important um overlord i did say we, lizard fucking um and today's menu for me uh, yeah those are the that's pretty much it uh for anime so david would you do me the honors of getting the pink in with me seeing yeah. that i don't have sean all right so we've officially finished and we're going to our playing segment, and our playing image of the day is, oddly enough, not related to gaming except for the uh, Ice Climbers meme. But, um, David, what have you been playing? Just basically Pokemon Ultra Moon. And no Pokemon Go or anything like that? Nope. Uh, I don't have a phone that can handle that. I... I could, but I don't want. I choose not to. But if I had a phone, I could. I would probably be playing Fate Grand Order. Yeah, I know a few people that are playing it. Um, yeah, because I'm personally curious of what servants I would actually get. I think all stuff was released right now. So why would I care about that trap? Why wouldn't you? I'm not a traps man. But he's so pure. Okay, he's the best thing in, yeah. in Fate X in. Uh, what was the anime? Fate uh, Apotheca? Yeah, he's the no, best thing. I really don't like him. That's fine. That's Everyone has their own opinion, but I think he's the only best character in that. At least from the black side. Was it black or red? Black. Yeah, at least from the black side, he was the only best character. Uh-huh. And what about Berserker? Uh, not too much. Yeah. I never watched the anime, but uh, uh, everyone cool. else seemed kind of generically bored. Uh, of course. I mean... Red seemed to have more lively characters, but uh, on the subject of Pokemon Go, I just have to give this shout out to Santiago. Uh, Gen 3 is out, so he's having fun with that, and that's all I know about Pokemon. Right. Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to go into my gaming section. Uh, I've been playing the uh, Master Chief Collection. Um, Halo ODST. Um, I've been ignoring every other campaign, you know. Master Chief Collection has Halo 1, 2, and 3, I believe. Um, fuck that shit. I'm playing ODST, my favorite fucking game of all time for the Halo franchise. Um, and I stand by it because you get health packs again. You don't feel overpowered, and it's, it's just a different flavor. Plus, there's like... Ah, uh, let me see. I gotta think a little deep on this. Like, okay, so remember uh, back in the day for uh, ODST, David, uh, where they were doing this whole campaign where, like, if you get the Halo ODST, you get this like months long beta for like Halo Reach. Yeah. Okay. That's all Halo ODST is gonna ever be remembered for, and that's. You know, people complain that, oh, you're not Master Chief, you're fucking weak, and all that stuff, and I'm just like, mm, yeah, but ODST kind of, like, brings it down to a kind of a more bearable human level, and, like, I'm playing it on, um, not Legendary, Heroic. I've been playing it on Heroic, and it's pretty tough, like, but it's not as ridiculously tough as, like, Legendary. Um, so it's a different difficulty than like the other Halo franchises uh, 
after Halo 1 because I, I believe Halo 1 had the uh, health system where like you'd have your shields charged but your house would be damaged. Yep. And ODST brings that back. Um, I'm almost finished with it so I'm happy with that. Um, next one is I'll just say Overwatch because you know it's not the game I've been playing the most but it's the most recent. I played it yesterday and it's still the year of the dog event. Yep. And there's a new hero coming out. Oh yeah. Um that would be the news nah no, fuck it, let's just say it. So uh it's available on the PTR, so Bri uh the new hero is called Bridget. She's one of Torbjorn's daughters, I believe. Torbjorn's only daughter. Oh. And it's like oh uh, and... he got around. Well, it only showed him and his wife, and her. It didn't show anyone else. Oh. Well, dang. Well, that... besides Reinhardt. But she's also Reinhardt's squire, so, you know. Uh, she's been shown a few times. I don't know what actual her role is. I've seen a few of her she's attacks. A, apparently, she's a support character, but can also work and fa fight as a, or, or function as a tank. Yeah, she's got the kind of special Reinhardt shield that can shield bash and like stun people uh i've seen some videos where like she's out she stunned the fucking reinhardt out of his shield can't stun a bastion out of his turret mode um uniquely enough it can stun a, a torpion turret so for like a few seconds you, yeah. you need to get through just shield bash that shit let your teammates get through and then just repeat um she's got more range than reinhardt with her melee, at least. And yeah, because it's, it's more like a club slash whip. Yeah, and I don't know what else she has, but like I kind of like it. Might be, uh, might be one of the reasons I get back into Overwatch. But you know, uh, I ended up playing uh, Capture the Flag for a bit and um, Quick Play. I absolutely hate uh, what's it called? No Limits. No, no, not No Limits. Mystery Heroes. I, I just can't get... I just can't like it, because uh, sometimes, you know, everyone's a random character sometimes, and sometimes you get multiple characters. And uh, if you're on a team, if you're fighting a team that has, like, maybe, like, let's see, two Bastions, or two Drunk Rats, or two healers of any sort, it's gonna be a real struggle for you because you just they're just gonna be pushing and you're just gonna be like having a bad day trying to deal with this you'll die you'll get a new character your ult's gone so you have to recharge that ult and you just absolutely don't have a good time so if it's not in your favor I don't like it but whatever that's overwatch um it's it's only fun to play when you're with friends and you can only do it for so long but I had a good time yesterday and my main game I've been playing and uh, David you probably already know this Monster Hunter Worlds yep it's, going around flying monsters slaying them and wearing them yeah basically um uh, I already beat Nergigante that's kind of like the beginner hard level boss stuff and like you unlock these other elder dragon bosses and high rank missions so there's there's another step above that that i have yet to reach but i've been having a good time trying to get a bunch of weapons so i've got i use a charge blade which is just like you got a switch blade thing with a shield and then you could switch to uh a great axe mode when you by combining the two so like you you do extra damage if you charge up these vials and all that stuff so it's it's one of these uh weapons that like it's got a little bit of a learning curve but once you learn it you have a good time i've also got into the fucking heavy bow gun which is basically the rambo gun i'm calling it the rambo gun because it's just you, you it's a heavy gun you you point you shoot and you got different ammo sets and if depending on the gun you get you have this mode that like kind of has a gatling gun as the uh, mode uh it's a limited time and then it goes on cooldown and it recharges so 
when, once they're down, uh, and once the monster is like down, or, you know, clawing, you can't get back up. Go to Gatling gun mode and just just feel the Rambo in you, man. It, it's fucking fun. And I've been playing it with just a few friends of mine online, and yeah, it's been a good three weeks playing that game nonstop. And that finishes the uh, playing segment. Wow, that's probably the fastest segment. So, all right, let's get into the. Uh, quick. All right. So, reading. I think I'll let you take care of this one, because I've only yep. got one thing. Yep. Well, besides, uh, I've been lately getting into foreign quests, and like some of them are pretty fun. You yep. know. Two things, my bad. Uh, go on. And so there's like foreign quests of different types from like, some of them are like Warhammer 40k, so you might get into it. Oh, send me a few after, what, what's it called? Uh, like the, the one I've been reading lately, it's uh, Embers and the Ashes or so. It's basically, you are a, well, long story short, you were just an ordinary administrator who is now in charge or the governor of a deaf world. Oh no, that never works out well for the fucking governor. Yes, but here's the thing. Not just any deaf world, the worst of the worst. Catachan? No, new one. Not Cadian? No. No, but here's the... Oh, who fun, who fun. are they? Tell me, tell me. Well, basically, long story short, you know, think of it as uh, Norse mythology on steroids. Valhalla Nice Warriors? No, it's a more... It's a giant planet that, like, is a warp-based and all that, but doesn't... But not to get out of touch with chaos, and practically everything is trying to kill you. The plants, the animals, everything is like it's a OC planet world. Oh, okay, so uh, original yes. kind of faction. But I'm assuming, do they have coconut heads? And by coconut heads, they're hats. You know the Russian hats? No. That Ilya have? Okay. No, then. no, no. There is none of that. Then yeah, definitely not Valhalla Nice Warriors. But no, no, it's. Right. Jungle, or, uh, or something like that. I, it's got everything on it, okay? It's a very big planet. Alright, I'll, I'll send it to me later. I'll probably check. Is it in audio format? No. Dang, that might be a, I'll find it's it. It's Foreign Quest, I told you. So basically, uh, like, the guy's been doing it for about a, a couple of years. Okay. So you, it's pretty much past about, uh, let's see, it's over, what, 130, 120 years it's, since it was first founded? So it's been a, so there's been some pretty good success actually. 120 years since you landed and ruled it. It started. Oh okay. And you, like I said, the guy's been doing it, and he's been yeah have been having a pretty good run with it. So he's been getting rejuvenation treatments to be young forever. Uh, actually, he found a rejuvenator that would keep him young for over 700 years. Bitching. Uh, when can we have that? Hell, if I know. It's like, uh, you do realize that pretty much it's going to be the wealthy that owns it. But also, the guy was so successful that he was able to give out free education and free medical care for everyone. So, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, Canada. They, they, oh my fucking god, Space Canada! But here's the other thing. Uh, you mentioned Cadia before, but we pretty much, he pretty much made everyone work and train like Cadia soldiers. And do they believe as hard as Cadia? Yes. Oh my fucking god. Then they're fucking gonna be bitching. I mean, well, like like I said, it's a death world, so everything's killing them. Like, the wildlife is killing them. The plants kill you. Yes, it's not a joke. I mean, there's like all sorts of plants that try to... Yeah. That are poisonous, that try to eat you, that mm. try to give you illusions, that try to... So and so. I mean, like, one of the biggest killers in the whole planet are the blank spiders. Blank spiders? Te spiders that can teleport. Oh fuck, that's totally bad. And they get and they're extremely poisonous. I bet. So basically, you gotta sleep with somebody next to you, a woman that's awake. Oh no, and and these little guys like to sleep, uh, like teleport inside your little clothes fabrics or so on. So you you know gotta be aware. Ah, uh, well. These guys sound very fucking terrifying. Almost as terrifying like I said, it's as... not it's not just like big giant creatures that are trying to kill you. Everything's trying to kill you. Even the sand's trying to kill you. I mean, like one of the like a while back of years ago, there was like a new a settlement that was built in the desert, 
And all of a sudden, we found sun beetles. What the fuck is a sun beetle? Apparently, it's, uh, I think of them like fire, fireflies or, you know, on steroids. Basically, like, you know, they're flying around, they're like little colors, and all of a sudden, they can make a giant, big-ass explosion. Oh, my fuck. And, like, if they're not, if they're, that's if they're shocked or surprised. Otherwise, they can shoot a laser at you. Oh, no. This is bad. You know, and I thought the fucking Katachin fucking Death Toad is bad. Yeah, well, there's also the face tigers, and then there's, like, basically tigers that can teleport. But eventually they became domesticated. You know, we actually have a regiment that fights with teleporting tigers. Okay, that sounds awesome. Yep. Uh, but, you know, there's also some bad things that happen there, so with all the good stuff. I mean, long story short, the Emperor's dead. Officially in this o in this OC universe, yeah. Okay, um, and because he's dead, there's a new chaos god. Oh, who is it? Apparently, this chaos god is pretending to be the emperor. So it's not named yet. I don't know the name. It's more like I think obedience. Uh, well, fuck. I'll have to check it out now because I'm a big, huge Warhammer 40k fan. And yeah. I mean, if it ain't obvious already, David, I have my army yeah. watching over my plants and my stands. And so that's what one particular war, Warhammer 40k yeah, that I've been into, that's, which has been pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and also, the orc gods are now awake. Gork and Mork? Yes! Or Mork and Gork? I, yeah, that, actually, the, there's an Omake where, so, yeah, like, where you actually see them wake up, and then at the very end, all of a sudden, like, wait, who was Gork and who was Mork? You mean they don't even acknowledge their own names? No! Well, the thing is that they were waking up and they were trying to make sure they weren't noticed. So, we don't even know who's who. We just know that they're awake. Do they know? Oh my god, this could be a fucking weird-ass fucking thing. All right. Yeah, well, long story short, the Greenskins have now got a major power-up. Ah, okay. Honestly, that makes me happy, because I'm a... If I could actually start an army of orcs, it definitely would probably be my best, my favorite army. It's except for the fact that they just kind of aren't that good. You just have to hope and pray. You have your numbers can actually outweigh the other person, and on top of that, the amount of dice you have. Uh, there's a joke uh, around on the 40k things like, "Oh, orc army, hold on, I've gotta roll my dice." Grabs a bucket. Cause that's how many dice he needs to roll, and he has to re. And uh, I think there's a rule that like you re-roll. Um, let's see, uh, on fours I think. So any four, uh, any fours I think you have to you re-roll, hmm. or something like that. Yeah, well, I. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen. Yeah, it's bad. So it's like, other other anything four or higher basically is. So if you have to get and reroll for damage, and, and all the other dice, you just count them as miss. Hmm. So it's just fun. Um, but yeah, like it's just fucking dorky. I love it. Yeah. I love the orcs. Yeah, well, well they're the they're one of the few classes or races that are that can be somewhat funny, or you know, cheerful compared to most of the other grim factors. Ooh. On the on that subject of uh, orcs, um, you remember um. What was this? What was the guy from Dawn of War? It was like, oh, Warlord Gorguts. Gazgul Gorguts, right? No, Gorguts. Gorguts. Uh, in the Dawn of War series, he used the um, uh, they used the model for um, what's his name? Uh, um, Gazgul or Xraka or something like that. Gazgul. No. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the big orcs that's in canon. That's probably the strongest or something like that. No, the strongest orc was the beast. Oh, uh, the strongest warlord uh, orc. But yeah, the beast is something else. Um, holy shit, you know about that. I told you, I've been reading the series and it uses actual facts. It may be an OC planet, but they use actual facts and, like a, and are very accurate with their details. Okay, I mean... All right, so, so yes, yeah, so I learned a few new things. Things that I probably did not want to know, but, you know, now I know. Alright, well... As it was like, how 
the orcs were, you know, or the beast was so almost so close to succeeding, or like how the men of iron once, you know, nearly took over the planet that the humanity had to ally with other races just to survive. Yeah. Uh, I don't... Oh, that's spoiler. still kind of weird, actually. Yes, here's a spoiler. Turns out you find the STDs or the ST... STC. STD, there's a totally different thing from Yeah, that. okay, I'm not used to the, the, the phrasing. Okay, STCs of Men of Stone and Men of Iron. God, that's gonna be great techno heresy right there. Yeah, like I said, it's pretty... Uh, you might want to read it. You might like it. I probably will like it. I, I already know me. Um, yeah. I love anything, almost anything 40k. Yeah. Um, but on the subject of, ga of uh, Gorguts, um, they used the Gasgo model, and in the Dawn of War 3, they gave him his own unique model. So he, he might actually... Let me just say this. If like he gets any popularity and people want to play that work uh, warlord they could probably like make a plastic mini of him like, yeah I, I doubt it but like hey if there's a demand game workshop has been getting smart yeah uh what else have you been reading uh other foreign quests you know like from like the legend of uh or the avatar series you know mm -hmm. but this like, and the ribby one right yeah there was also like the great and magical ozpin Basically, where Ozpin is not an immortal wizard, but just someone who bullshits as one. You mean like the. He sounds like the guy in Harry Potter that's like supposed to be this great fucking uh, wizard and shit, and then he's just been faking it all along. I don't know anything in Harry Potter like that, but no, he's a good guy and he's not an asshole. He's in one of the movies. Uh, he's the guy. He has his own textbook. Um, I think it was in a. Chamber of Secrets, or... I don't know who you're talking about. Order of the Phoenix. My bad. Yeah, yeah. it's in Order of the Phoenix or something like that. It's just this... Well, he's not notable or something, but he's just some dickweed who's like... Oh yeah, I'm this great uh, magic guy, and he kept he takes Wait. like the credit for everything. Oh, okay, that's Gildio Lockhart. Yeah, him. That's a... That was book two. Okay, see, thank you, thank you. Chamber of Secrets. Yeah. And Order yeah. the Phoenix, I can't believe you thought that. Well, he fucking flew out of a fucking Phoenix in, in the movie. And no, he like, didn't. In the movie, he flew oh, out yeah. of okay, the yes, Phoenix. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, yes. You know, on Harry's leg or something like that, and he's just like, yeah, this is like magic! And I'm just like, this guy's so fucking dumb. No, his specialty was memory of, of wipes. Like, he was good at wiping people's memory. And he used a magic wand that was broken, which ended up firing at him. Yeah, um, Ron Weasley's wand. Yeah. Because he was too poor to afford another. No, his wand was stolen, and he, like, he grabbed the closest one, which was Ron's, and, you know, like an idiot, he used it. No, no, I meant Ron's. Ron was too poor to oh. buy another one. Yeah, they're not exact. Ron's family's poor, and wands are not exactly cheap. No, they're not. Especially when you have Voldemort's wand. But, you know, Harry is loaded. Was loaded. Yeah. I think he had his money confiscated. No, he is. He's still loaded. Okay. Um. You can't exactly burn that much money, you know, naturally. Alright. You gotta go, like, exaggerate. Alright. Like, we're talking about Rome, like, parties. On the subject of Rome parties, uh... I'd like to get into my reading segment, which is... Okay, yeah. I have two of them, because I just remembered I caught up on the latest chapter of Berserk, which is uh, big. All right. I'd let's... like to get into that later. So, I sent you a video, uh, playlist video of, like, this guy doing a reading on, like, a uh, Dark Heresy campaign about a group of guardsmen getting conscripted into the uh, Inquisition under an Inquisitor that they just call Professor Elk because he gives Inquisitors... Actually... Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt. The, but like in a foreign quest, there is a person... They, you get in like a, a mm -hmm. witch hunter or so like called Oakheart. Fucking A. I, fucking A. Well, no, it's pretty, it's pretty... She's pretty cool. I mean, she's been having have to survive all sorts of crazy shit. Oh, it's a she. Yeah. Okay, that's... Uh, uh, that's totally not the fucking dick dickhead I was thinking. Nope. Of. Okay. 
I mean, like, we sometimes, like, for, like, some characters, you get to, like, you ask the audience, they get to write their names or, like, make suggestions. I mean, we have a beta-level, like, psyker who's perfectly sane, who's known as a Gerald Xavier. You mean a throwback to Charles Xavier? Yes. Son of a fucking bitch. All right. All right. All right. So at least the fucking memes are alive. Oh, yeah. I mean, on the subject of that, though, uh, basically, Professor Oak sends off, like, you know... Newly acquisitioned people to get like information, fight, no, fight hordes of monsters. He kind of gives these guardsmen that he conscripted to, as to a team, and that's usually made up of like a lesser inquisitor, so that they can get their inquisitorial feet wet and then become full inquisitors. Mm. Um, so basically, fight people they can't normally beat, and if they win, yes, congratulations. They're promoted. So the fun thing is, it, it's nonsensical fun, man. Like, they fuck up like they fuck up in Red versus Blue. Like... I find that hard to believe since this is Dawn of War. This is Dawn of War. That, this is legit. It's, it's legit a hilarious campaign that this guy narrates. Um, one of them was like, they get a void ship. And, uh... From the Eldar? No, just a regular void ship from oh. these sellers. They're like, alright, your mission is to get this void ship. This guy named Gunny is gonna fucking get it. And this guy's a Brit guy, sounding guy. Fat, ugly, smells... Always has this lofty odor to him. And he's like, I'll get you a good deal, Sai. And... I'm sorry, what is he saying? He, he goes to get a deal. Because uh, he, he gets... A deal on this fucking ship, not not the standard price that they're trying to get for it. And it's like, oh, I can get the deal. I can get a better deal out of that. And he basically kind of like, yo, I know this is a stolen ship, and you're carrying children psychers here, so cut me a good deal, and I will tell the Inquisition. So they agree, but they end up setting charges to the fucking uh ship. Well, frankly, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it gets <laughs> better. They put charges to the ship, and so they're stuck in the warp while they fix their warp drives, because... And then all the demons come in. No, no, they they have their Geller fields still up, somehow, magically. They're like, okay, we disarmed this one. So that means about this much of the bubble around our ship is good, and then this little area in the middle is almost a no-go zone. And, uh, there's like this... They see this... The joke is they see a bunch of stuff, but it's not as impactful as the poker room, which is... Basically dogs playing poker? No, it's uh, where all the people that they've ever played as, these guys, they, their characters do die off every now and then, but instead of going to the great emperor's hands for his holy war, they go to the poker room. So they're just either skeletons or all this other shit. Um, huh. And they just, they're like... Totally in conflict later on because of it, because they're like, I don't know if I'm actually gonna go to the Emperor or if I'll be stuck in the fucking poker room. Uh, and. Well, that's just crazy. Man. So this ship, uh, this isn't even the best part of the camp, but it's my favorite. This ship is so big that there's these inhabitant village people there. They're like, oh yeah, we need you to get these people in this other area out. And so they try to go around through the fucking possessed servitors, and one of them. There's these sticky notes that are like, don't go here because of this, don't go here because of that. One of them said, Narlock, don't open. They just thought it was bullshit. So they pry it open, and there's a fucking Narlock in there. And they slam it shut. I gotta remember what a Narlock looks like. Uh, remember? It's a T-Rex crew. Oh! Oh, from the town. Yeah, the greater Narlock. It's like... Holy shit, there's a fucking Narlock in the ship. What the fuck do we do? And it's like, like the fact you just read or like and listen to the warning. And and the best thing is they set it loose and they're like, Yeah, it's not gonna bite us in the ass and it did bite them in the ass because it showed up because the demon possessed it. And these fucking like possessed uh, techno uh Super tech tour. priests built a machine titan esque thing and so the, the demon possessed Narlock fights it and then fuses with it to become the greater Narla Titan. And they're just like, holy shit, God. And this is just getting worse and it's just like fucking hilarious. There's also demon nymphs. Uh, I'll just make this one short. Um, they're basically, there's this junk rat character who's a demo, 
demolitions expert, but he's kind of kooky. He thinks like he doesn't believe space marines are space marines unless they take their helmets off because they could be orcs in disguise. And uh, he's just like, just like he has this thing in the warp when they show ghost the tyrannids are showing up. They're just like because they have to get they capture a fucking live uh, um, what's that brain tyrannid that does psychic attacks? I don't remember. Well, they capture one of these tyrannids that's super psychically powerful, and they oh, of course, because that thing. could never go wrong. And. They see ghost tyrannids that they have to keep shooting down, and this guy's like, No, the fucking tyrannids have aligned themselves with the forces of chaos! An unstoppable horde of fucking demonists are gonna destroy us all! And, and he's just like, shut up, man. And so far he's been 70% of the time right throughout this campaign, so he has some valid points. Um, well, I don't think they're gonna cheat chaos and tyrannids are gonna team up. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. Well, okay. Tyrannids would, would probably want to eat them. Oh! It was called a zoanthrope. The uh, a zoanthrope got possessed somehow, mm. and shit happened. Okay. Uh, now to finish up my reading segment, the berserk. Yeah. Uh, it. the latest chapter of berserk is impactful because it's always impactful because it's an extremely gory story. Well, what do you know about this latest chapter? I don't read it, so I don't know much about it. You I do know Kaska? that. I do know that it doesn't pull its punches. This all right. So and it's pretty gory, and it's like it's a really messed up world. Yeah. So Kafka is back. Okay. Or at least it's hinted that she's back. They fixed her mind, and like it, it's it's been twenty fucking long years, basically, because in ninety seven her mind broke. Uh, Nineteen ninety seven her mind broke, basically, in the manga. She got totally destroyed that she became semi, well, for lack of a better word, retarded. Like, she she was just totally back to the, like, a blank slate. She's kind of like a baby. If you don't watch her closely, she'll chew on pearls and maybe choke on them. Like, and now she's back because they fixed her fucking mind up. And her? Well, that's until the next thing comes in and it screws them over. Here, here's my theory for the next chapter. It's gonna be a Griffith chapter, because Mira is not gonna like. We we had something good, and now Mira has to fucking take the candy away from us. So uh -huh. I've got money on it. Sounds about right. Okay, so well, good that to know. finishes our reading segment. Now let's get it in. Uh, news. David, do you have anything on the news segment? No, not really. Besides, um. The whole new Overwatch hero, uh, Bridget, uh, let's see, Conan Subo should be coming out within a few months. Oh, on that note, Gundam Build Fighters is coming out this year, which is a surprise. I, I thought know. it was already out. Season 3. No. Wow. Um, so that's just not related. So I'll, I'll get into the news I got. Um, this is going to be good news for you. So, oh, oh yeah, let me... Switch it up. Thank you for reminding me, David. Uh, reading. And let me change it to the news. Actually, I didn't even change uh, the image. Alright, hold on. This is, uh, this was for playing here. That's watching. This is playing. And this is reading. Alright, so this is our reading image. Yes, I did read this, but I'm not. I I don't want to mention it. it it's it's Shindle's henshin emergence, but uh, news. Here we go. This is a meme, so don't worry too much about it. But okay. Um. You know, we like the internet to be free and all that. So came to came a big. It was a big surprise for me to find out that California. Is actually trying to fight uh, net, neutral net neutrality with two executive bills. And, Thank goodness for that. And one of them is like already passed the uh, kind of like Senate thing, and it's gonna go towards like to be voted on basically officially uh, yep. in the grand scheme. So hopefully, uh, Executive Bill SB four sixty might save California's ass. There's a few other states doing some similar similar actions to protect it. And um, on that note, a Jeep Pie is uh, kind of uh, getting slammed too, because he's got uh, criminal charges on him.
for uh, like bribery and other stuff. So it's not really news, really, but it's the California thing was like a big thing. Like, oh, well, it's already, you know, net neutrality still has to be voted on. Uh, this could be uh, a way to save at least California. So that's nice. And, um, so David, uh, do you like porn? Well, hold on. I was like, I wasn't done deal with the news. Mm, I, was gonna, I was going to talk about that. Or It's not like major news compared to the whole net neutrality, but recently, like, there's been a resurgence of old anime. Oh, that's our main topic, too. Um, we'll get to that in a bit, but yeah. Oh, okay, so that, oh, my bad. I thought it was news, though. News topic, but. Hold on, are we, did I fucking put the news on? Whoops, there we go. My okay. bad. Um, so, yeah, there, there's that, which we'll be mentioning pretty soon. So, I'll take it away. Okay, so, do you like porn, David? No. Uh, I will not say I dislike it. So, you're on the same page as me. So, do you know Pornhub? No. You've heard of it? Yes. Okay, then, good enough. Did you know that Pornhub does a bunch of these charitous events during holidays and all this stuff? Like, I think for Earth Day, they're, they did this whole thing for every, like, video you watch, they'll plant, like, three trees. Well, it kind of, it's, believe it or not, it apparently seems like, oh, uh, well, certain of these sites are actually a lot more charitable than actually ch charities, yeah. Or, you know, like, actual companies that pretend to be charitable. So, you know, on the... As you know, Valentine's Day did happen recently. Um, so, for us lonely men, you know, or, you know, people who actually want to get some eye candy every now and then, uh, they did this special thing that I kind of felt was not surprised by. Uh, Pornhub has this premium thing where, like... You get HD, you get a higher bit rate or something like that. Um, but it was for free for Valentine's Day. And uh, I, I give it to them because, yeah, they're more charitable than more, most, like, charities. You know, it's kind of a surprise that they do this. You know, they, they, they've they got the money to let this happen and get away with it. So I like that. You know, they give back. Yeah, well, frankly, mostly during the holidays, people aren't exactly the happiest. And it's not just live, act, you know, real life live action porn. This also includes hentai. So you got the HD hentai man, and like, just say, man, just Pornhub, you're doing God's work here. Um, all right, I'll skip ahead to the big three, I guess. So. You remember Dawn of War 3? You, uh, about it being released? And yeah. how bad it is? Yeah. Relic officially dropped the Dawn of War franchise. So they left Dawn of War 3 and... Uh, well, instead of addressing that, the, you know, they they kind of failed... You know, they kind of flopped it themselves. Uh, they're kind of like, oh yeah, this is... Uh, it's pretty good. You know, we did our best to make this game. And uh, it just... Uh, we didn't have the uh, desired, uh, you know, player count for this, so we're just gonna drop it. So, in my opinion, they're just dropping it because uh, they don't want to actually admit they fucked it up, and uh, yeah. it just looks bad on them. Yeah. Then there's the sales. Oh, definitely the sales and the huge drop in like player, you know, just player drop, uh, player count. So it's just a. It was, it was a game that kind of had potential. It just had a very bad start. And uh, it definitely didn't play like an original Dawn of War. Not even Dawn of War 2 game. Which is kind of my favorite lore-wise. And Dawn of War original was the best RTS I've ever played. Um, so it just shows that this relic is really just a relic of what they were before. The studio, I mean. Um... Next one is Hawaii introduces multiple anti-loot box bills, uh, which is a big thing because um, loot boxes are being attacked as gambling. I'm sure you know that, David. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and they don't do it with just one. They do it with a, a lot. Like, 
And so I'll, I'm going to dig in a, a little bit later on, maybe in the next podcast. So hopefully I'll get something going on with it, but uh, with information. But it's just just saying, you know, you got some European countries banning loot boxes, and Hawaii is doing the same. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised that Europe, but uh, Hawaii? Yeah, uh, there's... I think Florida and a few other states are doing it, but... <laughs> okay, but now Hawaii, that's just ironic. Yeah, but Hawaii is the one that's, like, doing not just one, it's doing multiple, just in case. So, it might multiple get a little... Multiple what? Bannings on different games? Multiple or... bills to ban loot boxes. So, mm. it's a huge anti-loot box thing going on. Mm. Um, well, that kind of, uh, you know, bans several games. Sorry, Overwatch players from uh, those states. Bans Overwatch, but maybe Des Destiny 2. Definitely Destiny 2. Oh my fucking god. I think this is probably the first podcast I've had that I haven't mentioned Destiny 2 as a game. Mm. Feels good. Okay. Um, Metal I I'm sure you've heard of Metal Gear Survive, right, David? Yeah. The game that Konami made without Kojima and how terrible it is. A little. So there's a hidden message or at least it's theorized that it's a hidden message that like uh, some game developer ended up putting in uh, KJP forever. No. KJP forever. It's just kind of like a hidden message thing. So it's just like uh, if you match the second uh, the first, uh, last, the la if you get the first letter of each last name, it's spelled out KJP, uh, a few other things, uh, but it's like Kojima Productions. So it's just like, man, like, these guys haven't really betrayed, uh, Hideo Kojima, and they know they're getting, they know they're gonna get fired if they ever find out, so I, I appreciate that they put a hidden message in there. It's, it's nice to have Easter eggs like that. Plus, fuck Konami. They they totally destroyed a good game franchise that I just barely got into. Um, and the next one is kind of a sad one for us gamers. Um, a Chinese man uh, can't walk after 20 hours of uh, gaming. Okay. The, the little detail I know about it, because it's kind of a bit of a propaganda piece in China. Yeah, that doesn't sound natural. But uh, this guy was playing a video game in a, a net cafe, and he didn't get off his chair for like 20 hours, not even for the bathroom or anything like that. And when he tried, he couldn't get up, and like he had to be kind of like, they had to get the ambulance on him to get out, and he kept begging to play video games. Uh, still, while they got him out, so it's, it's it's probably the dangers of like, you know, having these long gaming sessions. Because I don't think it was just in one day; it was probably over a long period of time. Yeah, because it doesn't seem naturally possible to get paralyzed. Uh, well, maybe there's a lack of blood circulating when you're playing for so long, but like. It doesn't seem like you would get paralyzed as if your spine was broken. Yeah, maybe it was the way he was sitting, or he had no ass or something like that. I'm just saying, like, uh, for fuck's sakes, you know, it takes a lot to fucking, like, be paralyzed from gaming. And Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, it's easier to believe he, if he got uh, carpal tunnel, like, from playing video games for so long. Yeah. I mean, that's a serious thing with, like, um, Asian players who play StarCraft, for example. StarCraft, a lo any MOBA... So League of Legends. I do know someone who did have a severe carpal tunnel, uh, personally. I won't name him, but, uh, dude, he fucking earned to be platinum in uh, League of Legends, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, that's all I can think of, uh, on this topic. But I mean, yeah, Chinese guy fucking lost his, uh, lost his legs, man. Just gaming, it's it's sad and you know if anything it's definitely gonna fucking piss people off because people already think that like gamings are fucking like you know kind of like a sickness or something like that yeah. at least over here and they're trying to make it out to be something like that oh yeah like a uh, school shooting blame video games uh, oh yeah technically i wanted to avoid that but yeah, yeah. they're 
Recently, there was a school shooting, and not just the one in Parkland, there was also one, uh, technically it was two weeks ago, but news came out that the guy just, uh, wanted to do, wanted to shoot up the school. Yeah. There's surveillance where he did come out of the bathroom with a gun, and the guy goes out, goes inside instead, and shoots himself. So, that ended in suicide, but, uh, Parkland, uh... There's a lot of stuff that I don't want to go into because it yeah. goes into the political scene. But I think downright it was the guy's mental health and then the ne- a bit of the negligence on the uh, police department. But yeah. that's that's just my opinion. That's all I'm going to keep it up to. Sure. Um, that finishes our new segment. Let's bring it in again. All right. So. And we're at topic. Main topic, you know, the subject of, uh, you know, old animes coming back, at least on Crunchyroll and Hulu. We got yeah. our good old friend Joey Wheeler and his famous chin. Oh, God. So, uh, David, look, you bring us up into this. Uh, like, he's, like you said, there's been a recent resurgence of old anime. Like, animes that were made like 10 or so years ago. They just start showing up, and it's like as if they were posted as new. So I mean, I could I could definitely say that like I mean, is it gonna be a weekly thing that you get a new episode? Well, some of them are all complete, while others are just like you know like re-showing an episode once per week. Oh man! So I mean, I noticed this with Yu-Gi-Oh on Crunchyroll. Uh, they have the original Japanese, so um, it's definitely not the dumbed down Eng- American version we got or. You know, where, like, uh, there was an episode in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, that I watched where, like, kind of, like, uh, Taya asks, uh, Yami to go on a date with him. You know? Yeah, so they mean Johnny Steps. But they kind of made it out the like, oh, I want to help the Pharaoh find himself and, like, learn a bit about himself and all that shit. And that was kind of the arc that I got out of it. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds nice. She's a nice person. In the Japanese version, no, nah, it's an official date. Like, she she had the intention of basically trying to bait the uh, the uh, Pharaoh to like practically get in bed with her. Not 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 that way, but I mean, just saying she wanted more out of that, and uh, you know, it kind of makes it clear that like Japanese version is probably superior than the four kids dub. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's been several cases like that, like in one English uh, or Japanese version. Uh, let's see, it was right at the beginning of Battle City. Joey's mm-hmm. attacked by the rare hunters by that guy who has Exodia. Then it's like he loses his blood red eyes, and he's beaten up, so he can't go to his sister's operation in time. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's like a Honda is like he looks for him. He's like um, well, finds him, beats him up because you know like he wasn't there on time, doesn't know why, but he still beats him up. Whereas in the English dub, he just like finds him and then drives away and like while he passes like Yugi and Taeyeon and says, Okay, I found him, okay, later, bye. Yeah, they cut that out. Oh yeah, but that's what happened. Alright, so just, uh, on, I'll even bring up Hulu, just for the anime bit. So, we're gonna, we're technically doing this live, so we've got genre and Hulu anime and we got Crunchyroll going. Yeah. So, we're just... We're going to kind of more or less rapid fire what the name is and what our thoughts are on it. So, case closed. Well, that doesn't count. Case closed is like one B's, but it's going on for so long. And it's like you would think that they would have been finished a long time ago. No. And the guy would at least hit puberty again. Not really. Um, Let me see. I'm trying to see what other shows there are. Um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit further. Yeah, it's definitely further than this. Um, Yeah, because they're going by updates, so... Oh, it's like the newest ones or like the recent ones or this season. Okay, so I know I will recognize one of them. No, that's new. The Bicycle? That one's... Well, actually, no, it's just only a few years old. Yoamushi Peta? Wait, Yoamushi Peta? Yeah. Oh, it's probably a new season or something like that. <clears throat> just click updated. Don't click by fall. They, they go precisely. Like yeah, it. updated then. All right, we're in the updated page for Crunchyroll. Yeah. So let me see. The uh, Sanrio Boys I did hear about, but that's new. Uh, I think, can't tell if Car- 
future card buddies, maybe that's kind of old. I'm not sure. I never really got into the whole card series. Uh, future card buddy fight. Oh, this might be the first season. Yeah. But, I mean, that's still kind of recent. Um, that's yeah. not even... I know Yu-Gi-Oh! is on here. Oh, there we go. We found one. Uh, Space Sh Battleship Yamato. Uh, yeah, although this is technically recent, but, I mean... I don't think it was on often. Crunchyroll. Yeah. Let's it's see. Nice oh, Go Kudo. Go Kudo? Yeah. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? On the left. Okay. There we go. There's like, and then there's Street Fighter, like, oh, right. oh my god, the Street and, Fighter anime, the original Street Fighter 2 anime, yep. And then there's Earl and Fairy, that's a pretty old series. Um, I think this is also an old series, Key the Metal Idol, yeah. Um, yeah. we got Yu Gi Oh! here, you know, Yami Yu Gi, Yu Gi Yami. Um, fuck, that fucking made me stutter a bit. Um, I know Gintama's not. Uh, you got the original card capture Sakura. Hey, they're showing Yamada as a first time, as if it was an entirely new series. But you got the HK? Yeah. Oh my fucking time. Okay, so... Be, you know, the, uh... I watched this, and oh my gosh, it's only episode one, eight days ago. So yeah, they're they're bringing it back. I mean, this you could watch the series on YouTube, all of it. Uh, Penning of Saki was not on here before. Um, the reshowing Rosario Vampire. Oh, it? this is the uh, card fight Vanguard. Is the oh no, this is the new season of Vanguard. Um, Rosario Vampire. Yeah, I said that. Okay, uh, Phantom Requiem is definitely an old one. You got the Visions of Escaflown. Which I might watch because I haven't finished it. Uh, you son of a bitch. No. How dare you bring this up. Guys, if you're going to watch The Garden of Sinners, Kara no Kyokai by Type Moon, torrent that shit. Or buy it on Blu-ray. Because you need to watch it as as superior of quality as you can. Even if it breaks your computer, your Blu-ray player, your Xbox, doesn't matter. Watch so, it. Yep. Get um, the movie HD version. Definitely. Uh, Juose. Okay. This was an this was on Netflix, Planet of the Beast King. Um, it was kind of an interesting anime where like uh, you know these guys are kind of sent to this net to this planet so that they're like uh, they can survive on it, and uh, it's kind of a planet full of criminals and scum and all that stuff. So yeah, because nothing could go wrong with putting all criminals in one place. Yeah, so basically the Beast King is this is this title that like the top dog gets and like you have to beat everyone from a tribe or something like that it was a really good thriller-esque anime and uh it sold me on it plus it was on netflix and oh god okay so psychic wars is an old one i think oh my god ikotosin ikitosin yeah you got ikitosin well freezing was on crunchyroll so yeah. i give them that I saw it was Witchblade. Darker Than Black was a, not on Crunchyroll. It was on Netflix. Oh my god, here's several old ones. Moonface, like... Magicano. Is yeah. this one old? A Good Librarian, like, like yeah. a Good Shepherd? Yes. Okay, that one. Um, Spice and Wolf. Yeah. Oh man, you can't forget the Spice and Wolf, guys. I mean, it's only 12 episodes, so it's probably first season. I like the dub for it. It was pretty good. Um, yeah. People will have their own opinion on it. Uh, Shangri-La. Um, I feel like that one's an old one. Venus Project is probably old. Red Garden is definitely old. And then Miss Machiko is definitely old. The Mysterious Dinner. Oh my god. Alright. And uh, let's go to the Hulu. I don't fucking want to see this shit. Let me see the anime. They always try to keep you and get you. Like, oh. Sure, I'll start my free trial. Will it get me towards the anime? Nope. Nope? Alright. Well, there is a resurgence of anime that's kind of being brought back through these uh, kind of like uh, streaming sites. So I'm, I'm assuming they're just buying the rights so they can put it on there. And uh, I'd say it's good because Netflix can only have so much. You know. And a lot of the... A lot of the anime gets cut out for newer stuff, and that's just uh, my opinion on it. 
they they should just have an entire database of anime. Um, it's not as far as it'll let us go. Yeah, that's as far as it'll let us go. I bet if we did alphabetically, it'd be interesting. Um, if we did alphabetically, okay, there'd be a lot more. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. <laughs> so Let's much... see. Look what we found. A certain magical index. Yeah, that was a while back ago. So, Index is actually a good show, so... Yeah, until you start reading the light novels and where things got confusing. Yeah, he had... There's, supposedly there's a next season coming out. The third season. <laughs> well, I haven't heard news of it. It's been so long. It's been so long since this, since that happened. I mean, we got... After second season, we got another fucking season of Railgun. Well, yeah, she was a popular. Everyone liked her. I've, I don't get why they liked Railgun more. I mean... I guess probably because it was just more, you know, Esper, uh, Esper stuff instead of the usual magical stuff. Yeah. And, kinda... like, the main guy, like, yeah, he's like... His main ability is basically negating everything, whether it be Esper or magic, but at the same time... He's weak. Yeah. If someone was good at, you know, just close-up fighting, he they would get he would get owned. Alright. Um, Ace Attorney is an old. Um, oh, Al My Buddha is, over, is very old. Yikes. I, or, I, Yoriyoshi. Oh, Man, yeah, I remember watching this anime. I remember reading a series. I was... It was saucy, wasn't it? Yeah, especially when it came out during its time. Well, you know, the anime wasn't that great, but I ended up finishing it all. Uh, all the characters got their, you know, thing going on for them. They had their own character arc, so you got to understand them more, and they got conclusion for some things, but they didn't get one thing, and that's uh, the boy. We all know who won that one. It was a game, yeah. It, it was, was obvious a, from the very start. It was it was Allie, so yeah, it was obvious from the start since they were married, more or less. Yeah, uh, Air Master is an old anime. Yeah, so Akagi is, is kind of you know, Akagi is old. Oh, old anime. it's a it's still going on. And it hasn't stopped at all. Wait, is this new? But it's got an anime adaptation. Yeah. Just oh. think of it like a better graphics or whatever. So like Devil Man. Something like that, yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Yeah. So in my opinion, like my my main complaint about this whole thing is like they're either getting up all the anime that is in existence and putting it in a place and hoping to get profit out of it, or, or that there, hmm? or that there's no new anime coming out and they're just like reusing the old animes because you know. That's what I said. Yeah. And. My um the the next one would be getting old anime old manga and turning it into an anime mm. like Double Man or uh, a few other ones. So yeah, it'd be interesting. You know, sometimes it's good. I've heard good things about Double Man. Oh, I actually like this one. Uh, um, Angel Verge. They always had Angel Beats. That's kind of where I watched uh. I actually torrented it, but I don't think they had Angel Beats, actually. Crunch did not have Angel Beats. No, they did not. Um, anime guitar. Oh, God. What the fuck is this trash? Oh, it's new. Never mind. It's, it looks cute. Um, we thought Madoka Magico was cute. <laughs> when we, when oh, we first were wrong. Out. Yeah. We should have known it more better since it was made by Urb. Genuru. Genurobuchi, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Aquarian Logos, that's an old one, I believe. Arata the Legend's an old oh one. Oh my god, Area of the Animation? Dang, that is way old. Let me, let me see. Oh, dude, if they have Sola on here, I have a reason. Yeah, that is way old. This kind of anime, this kind of style of anime is outdated. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It still looks good, though. Oh, it was a nice se series. Hold on, just just for my sake, I want to know. Um, what was the anime I mentioned? Um, you mentioned a lot, so I can't Sola. tell. Sola. Shit. No. No, it looks like they don't have it. Alright, so they don't have the anime I like, but they have the... No, they do. They do? No, no. Oh. It's just a forum thing. But This is... 
Solo was 2007's best anime. Uh, it was voted on, at least in Japan. So. Yeah, the the West has different opinions. Yeah, the West just wants action and blood, but now they're getting more. So, um, what are your opinions of this whole resurgence of that? At what? This is what is your opinion on this whole resurgence of anime, David? Old huh. anime, by the way. Well, I guess it's probably not so bad since you know you're just watching it for nostalgia's sake, mm -hmm. and you're and some of them were pretty nice to watch it, so it's okay. But otherwise, it's like. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of. I want something new, something fresh, but sometimes you just don't get that. Yeah. So I'm saying there, if there was some good old ones, you can watch it. We watch it for nostalgia's sake, and yeah, uh, I guess it's already it's somewhat new, but you already know how it ends. Yeah. Or like you're looking at the animation, and it looks a little bit different or funkier than it, than most enemies that come out nowadays. So. Mm -hmm. Alright, here's here's my interjection here to, to this uh, whole resurgence of anime, and I guess this would probably be my most, uh, you know, uh, what's the word for it, uh, I'll probably get some flack for this, you know, if anyone actually want, listens to this and, you know, feels otherwise. If there's any anime that existed before 2010... Don't fucking get mad about spoilers. You've you've had enough time to fucking dig into it, get into it, look into it, get into it. Ugh, I had something going for it. All right, so you had enough time to basically watch it, and if somebody fucking spoils it for you, fuck you. Don't don't play that card. You know, you know, fucking like, Aerith is dead, kind of shit. Don't pull that shit on me. Like, you Final Fantasy VII came out how many years ago? <laughs> so many years ago, we, so, were, we were so young. Yeah, so young. I, I was practically like not even. I was practically in elementary school when that shit came out, and people are still getting mad that like, oh no, dude, you just fucking spoiled Final Fantasy VII for me. Fuck you. All right, so let's end this little bit. So I think this is a good thing. It's also a bad thing, but uh, you know, spoilers. Don't, come on, it's it's two thousand eighteen. You've had it, like, more than enough time. Alright. Now we get to our next topic, which is our recommended slash rant slash tags. So this is going to be fun. So I've got a picture of Hotengeki, because uh, one of my favorite artists so far right now. So, David, would you like to start off with your recommendations? What was, What is one thing you'd recommend people to watch? What is one thing you'd recommend people to play, and what is one thing you'd recommend people to read? Hmm. Like, we, it doesn't have to be anything we we talked about today. No, I know. I'm trying to think of something good, but it depends. I uh, the Overlord series is always like a good anime to watch. So, yeah, I said it before, you know, but you know, something to read. Uh, well. I, I'm I'm into foreign quests, so you could always try giving that a try. Oops. There's like so, of course. We I, I could even put a uh if you give me the link, uh, I could probably put it in the video description. Yeah. So it's up to you. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll probably do that later. Uh, give me a so second. I'm gonna show some booty. All right, that that's enough for Twitch. So let's see. You're playing. Uh, I don't have anything to. To add, you know, besides the whole usual Persona Five or Pokemon Ultra, so nothing in general like whatever you played before. Oh well, I guess you. Know, there's always the Persona series. That's always a good thing to pass the time. That's always a safe bet, at least with us. You know, given our fucking tastes, yeah, it's probably the safe thing. Yeah. Yeah. What? Anything else I missed? Um, no, that seems to be it. So, uh, mine are kind of simple. Uh, I recommend for watching Psychopath Season 1. Um, Psychopath Season 1 is actually has the best ending, in my opinion, compared to the other season and then whatever came after that. So, you get a good conclusion with the villain, and you get a really up in the air thing happening with, um, 
the uh, tough as nails uh, hero kind of guy, but it, you know, you also got the main girl who started off like with this idea of morality and now she's kind of a bit more mature about it. She's less naive, so, you know, it's definitely one of those animes that's by Geno Rabuchi that really people know, but uh, since I watched uh, most of second season, I think first season's the best, so I think you should just watch first season and stop at first season. Like, any more and it kind of would ruin the whole psychopath universe. So, that's my recommendation. Uh, for playing, David, this is just for you. Since it's a, since we're both Gen Urobuchi fans. Sayonara Uda. Uh, you didn't see the head roll, guys, but, uh, I'm just saying, uh, it's one of, uh, Gen Urobuchi's works that, like, not many people know about. Yes, David? No, I know, I... I'm familiar with the game. It's like, yeah. Long mm -hmm. story short, it's pretty messed up, but it's very captivating, and you, like you'll probably be stuck there. And at the very end, you're probably going to have to go st st take a seat back, go for a walk, and think about life and think about what it means to be human. Yeah, like when I played it, you know, it's not a game you can actually like. It'll you'll take a fucking week to play. It's kind of like. You could probably play it for three hours, you get one story, and maybe finish most of it in about, mm, I'd say eight hours, I guess. So you'd have all the endings in eight hours if you're an experienced uh, visual novel person. But uh, I do say um, it's just one of those works that, like, it just, if it is captivating, you know, I always did like the whole Lovecraftian feel that Geno Robuchi does for his works, and uh, I I actually recommend it, you know. That's one of my recommendations, plus I, I'm trying to get my physical copy of the game from Faku, so I have yet to wait for that. So that's a shout out to Faku, I guess, technically, more than it is for Geno Robuchi, but I want my game, damn it. And uh, the next one. Berserk, my reading segment. So my recommendation is actually Berserk, given that like it's a long-running manga, and that has a, a lot of depth to it. It's got a lot of history in the anime community, in the anime manga community. You know, um, people who've read it already know that like it's a fucking hell of a fucking story. Like, and especially when you get past the whole. Black Swordsman arc towards the uh, Golden Age arc and towards the end of it you just get attached to these characters and you fully understand why uh, Gus does what he does in the beginning and uh, right now he may be more mellowed out you know as the Black Swordsman kind of goes he's got pals but uh you know Berserk has kind of been with me and I got into it like a few years back probably after 2010 uh so, really? Because I thought you read it when it kind of first came out. I knew it existed, and I just flipped through it, and I didn't understand it. I didn't even bother reading it mm. at Borders. So, I took a risk on it, given that like I saw other people were talking highly of it. And, you know, once you get started with Berserk, you know, you, it's kind of hard to put down. Like, I remember spending, when I was binging on it, I spent most of the night... Just trying to read it, and I'm just like, I'll, I'll stop on this chapter. I'm already like eight hours into this whole thing. I, I need to stop at some point, and you just can't. It's really difficult. Like, it leaves you with like a sense of like being small. Like, you want to learn more. Like, you, you just can't help but put it down. You know, I mean, you just can't help but keep reading. It, it's very difficult to put down, and like, I'd say you should, I'd be a really damn, damn recommended. So, this is our rant segment, David, so we don't need to clink, so. Do you have a rant? Death March. Mm. How on earth did that series go from being a light novel, well, web slash light novel to be 
an anime to being so loved or popular. I mean, frankly, it's kind of like fast food in a sense. Or, like, you could possibly enjoy it if you don't stop to think about it at all. No, I can't like it. Yeah, I know. That's why I, it's like... It's... <sighs> it's very hard to get. I mean, as someone who's been in the anime scene for a good while, yeah, I understand where you're getting at. Like, you just, you just can't turn off the brain. Uh, you know, some people might be easy to do. Just mindlessly watch it. Yeah. That's kind of why I didn't like Bright, uh, the Netflix movie. Mm. Um, you know, there's some things about it that just, like, makes you wonder, what the Alamo happened? What? Like, all this shit that happened in our world happened, but there's elves and fucking orcs. How would that could work? Yeah. So. It's it, just... <sighs> Bottom line, it's not really so great. It's, uh, the guys are pretty much a Gary Stu among Gary Stews, and that's just, uh, there's really no adversity or challenge. Yeah, like, the reason you watch, the reason I watch Overlord more than I would watch, uh, Death March is that, like, at least Momonga has some plan, because, like, he, he wants to be hidden in the shadows and learn more about the world he's stuck in. Yeah, because the thing is, He's in a new world, and he's not going to be, uh, he's being cautious. He's, uh, taking account that there might be someone who's as powerful as him. And unlike him, mm -hmm. he was like a, his character design was a player versus environment, basically NPCs. Yeah. And it's like, and we seen how ridiculously powerful he is. But so how powerful would a person who had their character designed for P versus player P, or player versus player? Yeah. Or who had min max. How how powerful would touch me be? Oh my fucking god! I can't. Please touch me is. He's a world champion. Please touch me is the guy who made a uh, Sebastian the butler guy. Yes, yeah, so he's also like the original founder of uh, Ein's old Ghoul before you know Momonga became the head of it. Yeah, and and he's the reason why Ein's or or Momonga didn't quit the game when he first started. Yeah, like it's just funny, like. That some guy named I'm oh no, no some guy named please touch me no it's not please it's, it's just touch me I thought it was please touch me no no just touch me okay touch me is like oh man it just sounds weird because I think I read please touch me in the fucking uh, Overlord anime fuck it no touch there, me no is, that was a joke people made okay touch me it kind of got popular but yeah go on touch me you know the guy's name. It's so silly or it's ridiculous. So silly, but the way he played was like, I am a man of honor. He played like a paladin. You know, he helps people when he can. Yeah. And uh, Sebastian and most of his characters that he probably made reflect that about him. But his name is Touch Me. Yeah. Well, and, it, some of the other players had some pretty ridiculous names. Yeah. And. Like, uh, there was like, um, you know, like the little elf twins. Like their creator's name was Spooky Booky. Yeah. Show or something like that. Keep, fuck it, whatever. And yeah, it means bubbling teapot. And Momonga's named after a squirrel. Japanese squirrel, yes. And like these are like some pretty scary looking characters with like terrifying powers, but they have some of the most ridiculous names, which is kind of like a fact about blood when you're on an MMO. Yeah, like it reflects it, and honestly, Overwatch. Oh, oh wow, Overwatch. Overlord has a a, mo a lot more better. Yeah. Aesthetic to it that I, I appreciate more. Whereas yeah. this one is just power fantasy. Like, Death March is just a power fantasy for just youngins. And. Yeah. Just really for people who don't really know much or don't really care. Yeah. Or they just want to see an MC who just like steamrolls any challenge or adversity mm -hmm. with no trouble at all. Which I have to interject. Uh, Death March is the reason I'll probably continue Overlord. Because I thought it was stale. Overlord, I mean. And I was like, oh, it's kind of boring. The dialogue's kind of going. And it's they're, All the characters are overpowered, so they're going to steamroll everything they get. There's not going to be a challenge. And then Death March came around, and it just made me appreciate it a lot more. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you, Death March. You did one good thing. Yeah, I never thought I'd say that. Yeah, so, is there any other rant? Because I've got a few. No, I can't think of anything other than just, you know, like, Death March, like, come up with some new anime, you know. It's just a whole fucking light novel thing. 
Yeah. All right. All right. Go take it away. So my my rant is three things. So I'll just start with the Konami. You know, Konami is definitely dead wrong to think that they'll get like anything out of the whole Metal Gear Survive. Like, yeah, I thought they, it was over. It's not over. They made Metal Gear Survive. I mean, they they're not their sales. No, aren't I'm there. saying I'm saying before they made that. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, because with you know how Snake passed away or so. Uh, the latest, uh, Metal Gear Phantom Pain was a prequel to, uh, Metal Gear 1. So... Of course. Eh, I don't want to get into the whole chronology of it. But yeah, Snake died. And, uh, yeah, like, I'm just saying that Studio Konami is officially, if it hasn't already been dead to, in the player's eyes... Metal Gear Survive is definitely the place where they're they're never gonna fully recover, and I mean fuck them. Um, next one, uh, it's about Black Panther, but it's not really about the movie. It's more about people's reviews on it. Okay. You know, I think there's they're praising it like it's like the first black superhero movie ever, totally ignoring Blade. You know, the Blade series. Like, Blade wasn't like a superhero series. He's it was a Marvel more... series. Okay. Mar yes, he was more like, I don't know. Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Okay, so if they're saying it, do you see that's, that's that the is, devil? That, not only that, he was more of a loner. You never really saw him team up with anyone else. And if they did, they usually died as fodder. Yes. But, but, but see, you see, I wouldn't be mad about that. It's just the way they phrase it. The, these reviewers phrase them like it's the only black superhero ever. You okay. know, all right. Well, okay. here's the thing: these from these reviewers aren't really hardcore fans. No, like, they're not. Like you, so they don't really know that Blade is part of the Marvel universe. Or There's what? Luke Cage. If you want to say, you know, black superhero, if yeah. they said black uh, well, Marvel there's... cinematic, uh, no universe superhero, yeah, he would be the first Marvel cinematic hero universe. Two things. Character. One, they're either not as hardcore fans, so they're probably not as aware about these other uh, black superheroes, or they're just addressing it as in the movie universe of Marvel. I would I would put in a third thing in here, and they're trying to put like this whole fake nerd facade thing going on. Yeah. You, you know, it, it's what you know. People can tell when someone's being a fake nerd, so it just makes it look bad. But I mean. They phrased it poorly in all of these reviews, and it pisses me off. So, will I watch Black Panther? Probably not. I'll probably watch it on, on like, a fucking streaming site. Or, if Blockbuster was around, I'd probably rent that shit for nine bucks. Uh, but, that's just... Who, who remembers Blockbuster anyways? So, that's just my opinion of it. Like, I really hate the way these people are, like, just going about this movie like it's the fucking most revolutionary thing ever and it's not um next one last one overwatch league is dumb like you know i i i, I've, I always liked esports you know i like the idea of like an esports team um uh, so back in my day esports were kind of more of a big thing when it was league of legends you'd have an american team uh, representing America, a legit American team, by the way. So, to make that up, to make uh, you'd have like a bunch of smaller pe teams in America competing against each other, so that they could be the leading American team to represent. You know, and other countries would do the same thing. And this is my problem with Overwatch League, uh, at least uh, for one of the teams, the uh, New York team. They practically mercenary Koreans to fucking play Overwatch. Yeah, so, that's probably that caused a lot of people to be a little bit salty about. I'm I'm so salty about that. Like, what what happened to fucking like curse, like team curse, or like trying to be like the whole esports thing? Like, you know, you're taking away. Uh, you know, tell me they're American. Like, if they're American Asian, I'm okay with that. But I think these guys are just full Koreans. Like, oh yeah, we just basically mercenary Koreans. I mean, it's just like there's no incentive for an American, uh, or like 
you know, at least there's no incentive for me as an American to represent an American team. So I represent Sale, you know, the black and gold team, basically. So because it looks fucking nice and sweet. Um, yeah, like Overwatch League, I think it's dumb, and that ends my rant. So David, let's get our clinking for the uh, best segment of all. Yeah. Tags. David, uh, you have a, hold on, I'll pull it up. You said you like, what's your tag? And I'll get you the, uh, description about uh, it. Um, I was going to go with, like, how about elves? Have we done that before? Um, no, we haven't. It doesn't matter uh, if you... I, I don't want to, I like to be fresh. Well, let me pull up the definition of it, if you don't mind, from, uh, from my source. Sure. So, elves. <clears throat> it's a type of creature, visually, and its description is that it has pointy ears and a slender body. Its gender, the gender of the elf determines if the tag is placed in female or male namespace. And it's really hard because, you know, elves usually have effem effeminate features. Look at uh, Lord of the Rings for that. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the official textbook tag. Yep. Alright, so... Do you know any artists that do, uh, you know, the tag? I would have to look, go and look. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. What about a story? Uh, gotta look for it off the top of my head. Dang. Like I said, they... Well, yeah. I mean, if anything, it's just simple. It's like the premise is elves are the key thing. So, like, um, I, I remember there's a doujin where it's just like, this human is like in an elf school, and like there's a bunch of other like oh, elves that want him. Oh yes, because they have a low. Elves just technically have a low birth rate since they live long lives. Yeah, there's a there's sadly this is technically going in the uh, mind mind warp thing kind of thing. But uh, there was one where this elf girl goes into the human world, and this teacher basically tries to corrupt her, and like. He, he just kind of like constantly uh, has sex with her and they have you know like they say they have a low birth rate so on the last few uh, at least the last two weeks that she ha she's there before she has to go back to elf kingdom kind of thing he's trying to get her pregnant so that like she can like be banished or something like that yeah that's I, if I could find that I, I, I would definitely like give a shout out to it because it was totally scummy but the art was really good like, yeah that's kind of a little i should wait i should have probably mentioned that in my rant that like why is it with some of these artworks like they are they have the best artwork but some of the most worst stories or what like characters you remember shindle nope and i don't care don't bother ah uh, you, you see you say that but you, you can't forget her man saki all right so, yeah, I agree with you. Some of these artists have such great art. Uh, Shindle's one of them, but uh, that's for a different day. So, I'll start with mine, unless you have something, right? Nope, go on. Okay, so, mine is femdom. So, basically female domination. Yep, female sexual domination. Typically over a male, but can be over another female. Yeah. This is key. Because, uh, you know, sometimes you just need to, like, it's nice that the guy takes control and all that stuff, but, uh, that seems like, you know, standard. So, what I, I'll just notably name a few artists that do this, uh, tag pretty decently. I'll, I'll get the fucking worst one out of the way. And by worst, it's the fucking one you'll make fun of me. Bo Bo Bo. He's mm -hmm. an artist who does um, this uh, kind of like uh, this is, he does this story that I really like where this guy um, this girl technically goes into a new this like apartment like room rental thing he's like I'm gonna rent this room and like uh, he's with other with three other girls one of them's like uh, 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 what's it called uh salary worker one of them's a college student the other one's just like a rowdy college student that just wants to have sex every time 
really dark skin. I like her. Um, and uh, turns out that the girl's not really a girl. It's a guy. And so, you know, some stuff happens there. And yeah, you know, it, it has this femdom feel. So I think he, he deserves a good shout out. Another one is uh, Miyamoto Isa. Um, does really great art. Uh, does a really good succubus story with... Uh, that has fandom going on. It has a very bad twist ending, but that art is really great. So, this is an experienced artist. Um, and another one is Sasamori Tomoe. Uh, does that ring a bell, David? Nope. I bet if I pull it up, you'd probably recognize it. Probably. Here, yeah, I'll bring it up right now. So, Sasamori Tomoe is a. Uh, Sasamori. It's one of his works is definitely related to yeah it's a long running series but it's uh Hokago no Yutose oh yeah okay yeah, and then there's Succubus Stayed Life he does that one um apparently they were in a Eroquis comic thing but it doesn't matter so Femdom is a really good tag and Depend, depending on the artist, you'll have a really great story, or you'll have a really great visual, or both. So, alright, so this ends uh, this uh, dirty casual corner. Uh, hopefully for episode 10, Sean will be here, and if not, well, we'll have to make it work. But uh, we'll definitely have some stories for from Japan uh, to hear from, and hopefully he can give me some dirt on Soapland. So, uh, David? Uh, you ready? Alright, so let's clink. And, uh, you guys have a good night. Yep, and have a, and take care. Till next time. Alright, later. Ciao.